So it, it turns out that um, a similar formulation can also be applied to event-related potentials, not just oscillations. And we'll discuss this now in this module. So the simple idea is we worked with a covariance matrix of one trial of data to capture variance you know, for some oscillation. And it was probably band pass filter. Um, if you, we use instead of that the actual raw data x, the number of channel stems, number of time points matrix, and went on with the same generalized linear model, uh, uh, or actually the logistic function of that, and went on with the logistic loss for that. Um, if we did that, um, we would still learn a low rank weight matrix like this one. It's just that now the weight matrix assigns weights to time points and to channels. Uh, because that's the, f that's the same form of the data that we put in. You know, one tries a matrix, and we take the inner product between that matrix and the, and the weight matrix. So we sort of assign a weight to certain time points and certain channels. And, be, and so this matrix is not arbitrary that we learn. It's going to be low rank. And so you can view it as a product of something here and something there. And if you think about what that means, you, you see that basically this, um, for a rank one matrix, um, the, the um, loading across channels is basically a spatial filter again, or serves the role of a spatial filter. And the loading across time is the weights over time for a source that is picked up by the spatial filter. So basically what you learn is effectively that there is a source and how to, to pick it up, in source time course, and when it's relevant in time. Um, so say it's you know, not as relevant in the beginning of the trial. You know, say here the person press a button, and then it becomes relevant, and it fluctuates in some way, and say that you know, there might be a positive negativity and so on. And after one second, you, your data ends. And so um, that's what you are learning if you're applying this formulation to, to two class data with ERPs. You could use this exactly as it comes and apply it to the flanker task data that we described earlier. And um, so because it's not just rank 1, it's low rank, it's maybe rank 5 or so, you are learning, in effect, a small number of sources and their associated time courses in this epoch, um, or the associated time, time weights um, for that, that are max, you know, maximally predictive of your label, uh, your class label, or your continuous output or something like that. So you learn how many sources are relevant. And um, what's nice about that is, uh, aside from the fact that it takes a while to optimize this, maybe 20 minutes or 30 or so for some reasonable sized data, uh, there's no hand-tuned parameter in there. All you do is you say, uh, well, the overall segment that I think is interesting is something like minus one second to one second relative to an event. Um, and it'll learn where it's relevant and what sources are relevant and how many sources and so on. So, here is when you, what you get when you apply this to some actual data. Um, this is this methodology applied to a rapid serial visual presentation task. Um, the person was supposed to find an airplane or something on a satellite image. There is a time point zero when I think the image is presented. I'm not sure if the person had to respond or so. But in any case, um, what it learns is a very, very finely tuned spatial filter. This is very high number of channels, 256 or so. This is some kind of a surface Alpacian or so. Uh, and an associated wait time, of course, which looks very much, you know, biologically meaningful. You know, that's just this typical ERP time, of course, basically. And um, and another component, which is actually a dipole, it's, it's in a similar location, and it's associated time, of course, which is slightly different. Um, so you can say it learned two sources. It didn't learn any more, uh, which, ma you know, are maximally predictive of whether the person saw a target or not. And it actually also works reasonably well. So it has an area on a curve of 0.9 or something like that. Uh, and again, no hand-tuned parameters. So you can um, you know, f have it search what's important in your data. And that's the end of the um, ERP story here. Uh, but there is a generalization that I'll talk about next.